Americans are heavily in debt. This issue continues to compound. Their student loans adds on top of the credit card debt. Their mortgages pile on heavy. In fact, it's so bad today that many people in New York and California suggest they literally can't afford to live there anymore and are considering moving. The debt will collapse the nation. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at the issue of debt. This is something that I cover very often here on the channel. I consistently show you the statistics and I bring to you the valid information that is simply ignored by most individuals. So let's get into it right away. 43% of voters in California say they can't afford to live there, and the problem may be bigger than housing. There are many issues here. It's not just mortgage debt, though that tends to be an individual's biggest chunk of the debt that they owe. But of course, that is a lower interest rate, and you can stretch it out over a 30-year period. So these people, they don't feel the burden right away. But when you start adding in the other types of debt, including student debt, then it becomes more of an issue because they this is something that people cannot stretch over a 30 year period without it compounding heavily. I'll talk more about that in a second, but this issue here is not just for California. You could see in this article, they talk about New York. More than a third of all city residents say they can't afford to live anywhere in the state, much less the Big Apple, and believe economic hardship will send them packing in five years or less. That's 41% of city dwellers who can't cope with New York's high cost of living. Separately, 41% fear that they will be forced to pull up stakes and seek greener pastures where the economic climate is more welcoming. And I've shown many videos of this in the past where people are leaving one part of the country and they're going to others. Businesses are doing the same. They are seeking places that have lower taxation and they're more welcoming to either businesses or individuals. Places like, for example, Arizona and Florida tend to be much cheaper than areas like California and New York. This is when you know it is unsustainable. Take a look at this quote. They are making this a city for the wealthy and they are really choking out the middle class. You need to have a strong middle class in order to have an actual economy. You could not have very elite individuals and very poor people and then it still runs normally. The actual total amount of wealth may not change but when you have that great divide in between the two you will have a collapse. There's more detail in this article here, but I'd like to move on to some of the issues that I have been seeing along the way. Regulations allowing San Francisco property owners to convert common spaces into accessory dwelling units have brought forth a flood of applications to carve new apartments out of everything from garages and basements to boiler rooms. Please understand what I just said. They are taking existing buildings and they are repurposing some of the spaces that were closets, that were boiler rooms, and they're now going to have people live in them. That's the severity of the situation right now. Instead of understanding why the times are the way they are, why things have become so expensive, instead of understanding the central banking system, they are taking crawl spaces and they're putting people in them to live. They talk about these ADUs, the accessory dwelling units, and how there's more and more applications for these. They're getting approved. So you don't have to worry about not being able to afford a place to live because certainly you'll find a crawl space soon enough. And if you can't afford a crawl space, don't worry about it because living in a parking lot amid Santa Barbara's wealth is a kind of middle class homelessness. This article covers various individuals who unfortunately, due to various issues, they are now stuck in their cars living on the streets. This is being considered for a lot of people who are working but perhaps cannot afford the living expenses that they are seeing particularly in New York and California. There are other articles I've seen where people have to commute for four hours a day just to be able to work in a place like San Francisco where there might be some available jobs. However, they can't live there. So they have to commute two hours back and forth just to be able to make ends meet. 
but I know you've come here for the charts, so let's get into a few right now. The average household's credit card balance is nearly $9,000. That's $300 over being sustainable. I don't know how they come up with that figure, but regardless, imagine every single individual is in debt at this rate, $9,000, and you compound 18% interest on top of that. There's no possible way that they are ever going to pay it back. It will simply grow further and further. I was reading some statistics about this and unfortunately for a lot of people this number only gets worse. The interest rates have risen over the last few years along with the amount of debt they've been paying. As we went from late 2017 into 2018, it was actually known that credit cards were being paid down. However, things started to change throughout 2018 into 2019 as individuals accumulated more and more debt. They were unable to pay that. Perhaps it's the interest rates on top of all of the other issues. But you got to understand, you've got the credit cards, you've got the mortgages, you've got the auto loan delinquencies, you've got all of this compounding. And of course, many people are being burned by it today, not tomorrow not next year but right now it's happening average credit card debt per household average credit card debt is about nine thousand as i said that is up three hundred dollars from the previous year a three percent increase year over year i mean it's not a big jump but the fact that it is already over where people are able to ever pay it back it simply doesn't really matter anymore total credit card debt has exceeded one trillion dollars and this will only get worse as time goes on a lot of people have this false idea that it's okay to accumulate the debt because eventually it will be wiped away. I don't know where that idea came from. If you study previous inflationary struggles that some countries have faced, a lot of times what they do is they peg the inflation rate to the amount you owe and then it will continue to go up and up and you will have to pay back one way, shape or form. They're not gonna let you off scot-free. It doesn't happen like that at least from what I can tell. Also, if you're in a hyperinflation, it doesn't even matter about your debt anymore. Look at the situation that Venezuela is in today. Does it matter about the debt? Really, if a person was in debt or not, people are suffering. Credit card debt by the numbers, 43% of Americans who have been carrying a credit card balance for two plus years. So as I said, 18% interest or whatever it is, maybe you got lucky and it's 15% interest. Well, it doesn't matter because if you're carrying it for this long period of time, that is only going to get worse. They're paying the minimums, but they're still adding more on top. Then you have $17,000, how much the average household with credit card debt owes. And $1,300 is the average household with credit card debt, how much they're paying in interest each year. $1,300 every single year, and it's only getting worse. People are definitely pushed to the edge, and this is a document directly out of the Federal Reserve, which basically says that 4 in 10 adults, if faced with an unexpected expense of $400, would either not be able to cover it, or would cover it by selling something or borrowing money. That means basically people are at the absolute edge. There's no other way to put that. Just look at this directly from the Federal Reserve, their own document and they still suggest that this is an improvement over the way it was before, it doesn't matter. Look how bad it is. If people can't pay the bills, they can't pay the credit cards, they can't have an unfortunate event pop up without it completely ruining them, then you know you have an issue. So we're coming full circle at the end of the video here, and I just wanted to mention this. Of all the states, only four have a middle class that is actually growing. In many states, it's becoming increasingly difficult for families to afford college and a home on a middle class income. You have to think about this for a second. Middle class income, middle class house, the two don't correspond anymore. And why is that the case? It would make sense all throughout history other than a few anomalies that have occurred. Today though, that isn't happening. Imagine you're the average family earning the average salary and yet you can't buy the average house. This is when you know the system is completely broken and it has to revert to the mean.
I really do believe it's important to pay down your debt because it compounds. You have to understand interest. This is accumulating over time. Maybe that's a monthly interest. Maybe it's an annual interest. Either way, what you are doing is paying a larger amount for something that you purchased. So if you bought a house and it's $500,000, I assure you, you're paying more than 500,000, just as if you bought an iPhone with credit and so on. You need to hold onto real assets instead. You can devise a plan where you are purchasing real assets, you accumulate them over a period of time, and in the end, you end up having things that provide you with income instead of always buying liabilities, instead of always buying into things that take money away from you, you should be completely rethinking the process in which you find yourself in. Well, that's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like on this video, you are supporting me, supporting the work I do and the truth. So I do appreciate that very much. Last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need from the foundation, the history, the asset classes, so much more. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to see the statistics about people fleeing New York and California, I had done a video. It has well over a hundred thousand views on it so click on it and i will see you there